Hello everyone and welcome to my hobby home. My name is Kathy. I'd like to thank you for joining me tonight. It is night time here. Um, I am sewing my blocks for the Brave Challenge that I See Stars Quilting. Uh, Kristen over there has put out for us. So tonight I'm just doing my blocks and I thought I would just bring you guys on so you can see what's going on. Um, not much, just chain stitching all of this together so I can uh, start getting my squares put together because pretty soon I am going to be out of pocket. So I definitely I uh, want to get some squares done before I head out of town, which when you guys see this, I will probably already be back and have a grandbaby, a new grandbaby. So what we're going to do is just get started sewing. I've already checked my thread. I have plenty of thread. I have plenty of bobbin. And, and I do have... Uh, seams under here that I have to check and make sure they're laid flat and I can feel them. It is flat. We're sewing everything on a quarter of an inch. So everything is uh, going to be the same size. Now my squares are coming out because I've already done two sets of squares and I'm going to grab them right here I've already done two sets of squares this is one and this pattern is called let me let me pull it out I, I think it's called whirlwind it's the fat quarter whirl whirlwind quilt this is from so can she dot com um, I will link them in the description. So if you'd like to do this, this is a free pattern online. Uh, you can print it down for $3. And that just helps support the creator because she does have to pay for an editor to get that. And this is my, my other square that I have here. So right now we've got two of the same fabrics, just different colors. Um... And I think they're going to turn out really pretty. So let me show you what we're doing. I have, I've already sewn all of these and pressed them all open. I pressed everything open. And what we do is we take two of the triangles, the same color. And what you do is you... You have a backwards L with the white on the outside. This is the easiest way for me to remember how to do it. And then I have a normal L with the white on the top. And when you do that, you just fold it over. I think you can see me here how I'm doing it. I just fold it over and I am matching my edges here making sure my edges are even oops that one's not not so even yeah it is and i just can't tell it but yeah guys how are you all doing today um i know i normally ask you about your weather because we have been in scorching temps here but today i don't believe it got it might have gotten a little over 90 but it was not a hundred so we had a and we had a breeze today too i believe at lunch when i went to lunch today from work it was 90 degrees so yeah we we got a little reprieve for one day and that's it because the weather is going to act back up next week we are yeah, if y'all just go on AccuWeather or whatever and pull up Louisiana, we're in North Louisiana. Actually, I can give you a location to look up. Look up Monroe, Louisiana. That's 
that's a, a fairly decent sized town pretty close to me and yeah you'll see we're going to be in 100 degree temps again all next week that's why i am hoping well and when y'all see this like i said you're probably it's probably going to be past that but that's why i'm hoping my grandbaby hurries up and comes because they're in kentucky and they have been experience experiencing rain and 80 degree temps and i am so happy for that for my daughter-in-law because you know she's pregnant and lord who likes them 100 degree temp days when you're pregnant i don't know anybody i know i didn't but yeah that's what what we've been dealing with but you know what it's still a good day still a good day even though today um when i left work i had did have to go get a tire fixed i had a little screw in my tire and i wanted to make sure it was it kept i didn't know it had a screw in the tire i really did not but i knew that one of the gentlemen that i work with put air in my tire one morning after I got to work because on the way to work I realized my pressure in my tire had dropped so I had him you know put me a little bit of air in my tire and so I've been keeping an eye on it luckily I mean luckily my vehicle has one of those things on the screen that shows you what your air pressure is because lord i'd lose every one of them little screw things that screws on you your um what's that called the valve thing valve stem yeah i would i would lose every one of them little old screw things caps i think they're called caps on the valve stems but yeah um when I got to the tire repair place, he, he just asked me what I had. And I told him, you know, I got a little air leakage going on. And I told him what it was, you know, which tire it was. And explained to him that I had had air put in it last week. And got it up to 35 PSIs. And lo and behold, today, even with warm weather, it was down to 31 well and one more it would have set off my low air sensor on my truck so he went on and pulled it off my truck and they took the tire off the rim and everything and you know did what they do they put the water and all that on it and uh lo and behold found a screw in my tire that don't surprise me does not surprise me at all but yeah but you know what i think i'm glad that i noticed that before i got on the road and i could have it fixed before i got on the road because we don't we don't like that because i've already told my husband when i get on the road i'm driving i'm not stopping i'm driving um my daughter was talking about going up with me and i i just she well i knew she couldn't because she can't get off work that long that I, i'm gonna be taking um a little bit of time off to go up there because i'm gonna i'm going to stay a little while because i don't i haven't got to see my son and my daughter-in-law actually since january i believe it's it has been a while it has been a hot minute and i miss i miss them and i know her mama does too her mama lives a little closer than i do and um her mother is a stay-at-home mom well she's not a stay-at-home mom she's a hairdresser but she does hair out of her house so i mean she has more f freedoms to be able 
to go up and, and see the kids, which I'm, I'm very grateful for that. That they are able to see family, you know. I wish it was me that the, I could go up there and see them, but I can't. I, I work. I have to work. And I have my little fur babies and all that here. But anyway, I had told my, my daughter when she was talking about going with me, I told her, I was like, look, I'm not stopping anywhere. I'm not stopping for food. I'm not stopping for water. I'm not stopping for gas. And because the vehicle I have is is a hybrid and i've actually done this i've tried it and i can make it from where i live all the way to kentucky on one tank of gas and still have a little left over and and that was going um by way of mississippi you know going through vicksburg and jackson and well, I might not have went through Jackson, but headed I hit Vicksburg. So that actually is an hour longer for me to go through Vicksburg. So I'm thinking if I go my shortest route, which actually has the quickest time, even though I am going through some small towns. Oh, and look at that beautiful fabric. Look at that. Is that not just outstanding? I love that. That's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I am so happy that Kristen gave us this challenge because it definitely got me out of my comfort zone, but I think I'm going to love this. I was actually looking at fabric for the backing because it does call for four and a half yards of 44 inch width. And I was looking at some grays because I, I don't want anything to compete with the front, but I think I'm going to use my extra fat quarter pieces and cut that into binding strips, actually, because I think that would look good, even if I did the gray background, because I thought I was going to do gray background, but I think if I do the gray backing, and I will just say the, the gray and white that I thought I was going to be using on this as my background, I did not like it. I did not like the feel of the fabric once I got it and I opened it up. But this is what I'm using instead. I want to see if you can see that. It's got the, the flowers and it has some shininess to it there. And I thought that would kind of, you know, the flowers go with it and the shininess you know it can hold its own against these beautiful bright colors so i i think those two go really nicely together and yeah i i do like to gab so i am not like i said in one of my previous videos you probably get no educational information from me because like i said don't don't follow me i'm learning this is all a process of learning and i will say this um i don't know if all mothers go through this but after all my children were out i'm not even going to call it empty net it could have been empty nest it really could have been but and please, please don't feel sorry for me. I, I'm not telling you this to feel sorry for me. I'm just telling you this so you know how much joy I have found in sewing. But life had just gotten to where it was very humdrum. I, I went to work and I come home and I took care of a house barely because I just absolutely did just the bare minimum because there was just no joy i had no joy and i start well i think the fact that i'm having two grandbabies brings me immense joy but when i started sewing i just remembered you know i, re I remember all the lessons that my aunt and my grandmother 
gave us sewing and cooking and I'm gonna tell y'all when I was growing up our favorite thing to do well I don't know it might not have been some of them's favorite thing to do but it was one of my favorite things to do and it still is a favorite thing to do um, and my husband does not understand why I have so many cookbooks well I grew up with my aunt has has still has a lot of cookbooks and we would sit down at her um, little island in her kitchen and we would pull out cookbooks and we would pretty much read cookbooks like books <laughs> We loved going through cookbooks, just looking at the recipes. Um, and I will say, I do have something new coming in that uh, I am so excited for. It It is something I purchased, and I will say this, you know, all my videos, none of them are, I am not an affiliate for any, anyone. I purchase everything that you see me do all my patterns i purchase them or get them offline for free N no one is you know no one is sponsoring any of my videos but of course i'm still new you know there may come a day somebody may want me to be an affiliate i would not know why because i am not a professional seamstress nor do I pretend to be I love to sew I love to create it just brings so much joy to me to be able to do this because I think back in 2021 I, I received a new perspective on life so to say I learned to enjoy the small things, but it took me a while to figure out what those small things were and how to enjoy it. So from March of 2021 to now, you know, I, I'm just now getting my clarity on a lot of that. And I will tell you, I have always, I've, I've always crafted cross stitch let's see i've crocheted knitted cross stitch sewn um uh, oh did plastic canvas and i will say i saw some plastic canvas patterns today oh i may have to get me some more plastic canvas and that's something i hadn't done in years there was some beautiful holiday patterns some plastic canvas holiday patterns and and I actually, my, my tissue holder sitting on my end table in my living room is a plastic canvas tissue holder that my grandmother made. And my grandmother has been in her heavenly home since 2006. So that just goes to show you, <laughs> and it was in her home for many, many years before that. And I'm so thankful that I have, and my mother, she, she did crochet, but she really didn't have time to try to teach us. But she would crochet, I think, in the evening times after we all go to bed or something. I don't know. I know she crocheted sometime. I just don't know when she got it done. Because, Lord, she had four of us that she had to take care of. I don't know how she did it. I had three, and whew, it was a handful. But I would not change any of it. I enjoyed it greatly. Now, I'm not going to say it was perfect and I didn't want to pull my hair out and probably theirs too sometimes because I'm telling you, 
raising kids nowadays is hard i don't know how people do it there are so many bad influences on them now now is when it does take a village it takes the parents the grandparents the church family the neighborhood the neighborhood grandmas now where i live i will say we don't have a neighborhood we we have cornfields <laughs> you know we don't have neighborhoods but it, it does take all the neighbors and everybody you know watching out for your kids and nowadays kids can't even go outside and play like we did which is sad because lord if i if i wasn't outside when i was growing up well uh, if we were not outside we were in the house cleaning i would have much rather been outside because i didn't want to be cleaning because that's what we did you know during the summer we my sister and i my older sister and i we we're the older two um because the next one after me is almost six years younger than me and then i have another sibling after that that is 18 months after that sibling so you know my older sister and i were the oldest too and and i will say we fought like cats and dogs growing up but now she's one of my very best friends i can call i actually talk to her every day and we try to go every weekend and have breakfast together but we talk every day in the morning and in the evening both of us head to work at the same time i see her headlights coming out of her driveway and mine are shining in her eyes i'm sure as she passes by my house because the way i park my headlights are right into um down the road she lives on that she's coming out by my house but yeah we always we took care of the house for mama because mama was working But yeah, times are so different now. It seems like with all these advances that we've had in everything, our nation is in worse shape than it was way back then. But of course, back then, everyone was knew how to work hard. And I don't know if this is happening in your area too, but in our area, we cannot find workers. I mean, we have a, a local Dollar General that cannot stay open because they don't have enough workers. They can't get people to stay. Now, I will say, I would not work there either because they don't staff enough people at one time. They have one person. Now, they're probably supposed to have two, but I haven't seen two people in there since probably a year after they opened. And I'm going to tell you, it, it's hard. It's very hard to uh, find help even where I work. Um, ever since I've been there, I've been there for four years now. And ever since I've been there, they were short-staffed. And we are now, I think we're probably at full capacity. I think we may have one more position available. But I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if they are going to fill that position. I just know in our org chart, there's one position that doesn't have anybody in it. And that may be a position that they let go of. You know, just let it out of our budget. But yeah, I work with a great group of people. I mean, I, I love my job. I tell my husband all the time, it took me many, many years to uh, find a job that I really enjoyed and I like. And, you know, hey, at, at 51, 
notes about time i have a job that i enjoy and i like and i can learn at it every day i work with a great group of people i really do now like everything i'm not going to say it's perfect i mean i do work in a public sector so i do have to deal with people And what you hear about that phrase, Southerners say, bless your heart, it's true. I say it a lot. But I have met some very nice people in my position. And I have one older gentleman that he'll come and, and see me every now and then, which I'm, I really enjoy his company because he's, he's, tells you the, all the old stories you know about the area and he's from a different area than I live in so it's just nice to hear all the old stories but yeah and if you can't tell I have a, a fondness for vintage older things <laughs> even people I, lo I love older people because you know Hopefully we all get there one day. Because you know there's. There's things that. We, we're all going to grow old hopefully. You know. Mine is having health issues. We all going to grow old and you know there's just a few guaranteed things growing old and paying taxes just about well growing old is not guaranteed aging because every second of your life that you're here you are aging which is quite phenomenal if you think about it it's like from the moment you were born you were born to die and what you do with all those seconds is what matters the most. It's not the job. It's not the car. It's not the house. It's not all the fancy things. It's what you did in between. The journey, I think, is how most people describe it. You know, how was the journey? I consider my journey pretty successful. I've, I've got three beautiful children. And yes, I, I am partial. But that's okay. Every mother is. I have three beautiful children. Smart. And... You know, hard workers. They're all hard workers, thank goodness. Okay, y'all see me just sitting here flipping. I'm doing the same thing on everything. I'm just chain stitching them together so I can get my first two triangles together. And I think that's what I'm going to get you through tonight is this first set of triangles. And then I'll hit that second set of triangles. Probably later, probably tomorrow, because it's already getting late for me. I have to be up at 4.30 in the morning to go to work. So I try to be down for the count by 9, and it's 8.30. But just like every other night, I'll have to uh, make sure everything's at my back door ready to go in case I get that call that my little my little grandbaby's on the way. And if you can't tell, I'm just a little bit excited about having me a grandbaby. I've been wanting grandbabies for so long. 
but nobody's been married or in the position to have a little baby and now I got two so excited so what kind of projects is anybody else working on I mean feel free to leave me leave a comment and let me know what you guys are doing um, any type of project you're on I'm I'm doing this the the brave challenge then I am I have a quilt from the quilted V virtual shop hop that I'm also working on but I seem to be having trouble recording doing that one and I'll even show you a square out of that I'm having I don't know I'm having sound issues all the way around I think I just need to get a new mic or something but this is one of my well this is a bunch of the squares but it's the same thing I'll try to get it where you can see that but yeah see we've got the uh, corner squares and I've got I don't know how many of this is like five yet yeah, it's five of them I've got that laid over here I'm working on that let's see I'm doing the brave challenge I'm doing the Quilting Bee Virtual Shop Hop quilt. You know, all the clues. Um, I am in... I'm doing the Puzzle Mystery Quilt with Cotton Cuts, the Fall 2023. I've got that one going also. And at some point, I've got to get my little grandbaby... My second grandbaby, I've got to get his quilt done because I'm having we're having a little boy. So I've got to get his quilt done. I've got several projects that I want to do for my grandbabies. for the um, spare room for them and I'm trying to think what else I think that's all that I have started now that's not to say that's all I'm doing because I have now this is an, another one of the fabrics there. I have three quilt boxes over there, subscription boxes that has projects in them that I want to do. And I have um, two of them are open gate quilt. Oh uh, yeah, open gate quilts. I want to do the projects in both of those. I have a measures quilty. I know a lot of people don't do measures quilty because the fabric is not high quality. But it is, I believe, now I'm going to say this because I am a new quilter. I do, the fabric is okay for smaller projects, but would you want it on an heirloom quilt absolutely not but it is good to get practice on it is good to um, do like a small project that you know like a pillow or a wall hanger or something like that and I have a kitty cat here underneath me that is wanting lovings what little one what my little baby He's the only one that is in the house at the moment. The other two decided they wanted to go see what they could kill outside, I'm sure. Because they think they little wild things. Or at least that's what they act like in the house. That they're little wild things. And they're still, the other two are still kind of kittens. They're, well, they're more teenagers at this point.
they're only a couple years old maybe a year or two old I can't quite remember how old they are but if my ash was still alive he'd be in my lap trying to uh, get me to love and pet on him um, he he was my he was my little baby he um, he had gallbladder cancer and his liver failed on him so he did not make it but he was my sweet little baby there'll never be another one like him he had his own personality for sure but yeah I'm hoping to be able to get these all done tonight but I am going to have to call it quits about 9 o'clock, which I'm sure the video is not going to go that long because don't nobody want to sit here and listen to me talk for 30 minutes. And watch me just do chain stitching. Now I've got a whole pile of these tri bigger triangles out back now of my sewing machine. And I think once I get the squares put together, I have not purchased my backing fabric yet. I think I'm going to wait until I get my my squares done or my yeah until i get my complete squares done because what you think something is going to going to look like isn't always what it looks like and i think i mean i am going to take this to a long arm and have them do the quilting and i can buy the backing and all that there and they have a large room that I can use to sandwich my quilt. And I mean, it is a fabric shop, so. And goodness gracious, I didn't know that thing existed until my aunt found out. Well, I had told her and showed her some of my little projects. I had done quilting and she told me that there was this quilt shop in uh, one of the smaller towns close to us and and I went over there and well the town's about as big as where I live but you know they have quilt shop we have a Dollar General well, I think they got a Dollar General too they may be a little bigger than us then <laughs> but um Oh, yeah, I went to that quilt shop, and oh, my goodness, y'all. It is not safe for me to know there is a quilt shop that, you know, within... It's about 30 minutes from me, 20 to 30 minutes from me. But, oh, I just... Oh. I can't go in there because I I can't get out under a hundred and twenty dollars y'all I mean this stuff is so expensive and that is just the fabric that's not the the batting that's not the back well yeah I think it yeah it is the backing because I got a quilt pattern I got the fabric I got the batting no I didn't get not get the batting I got the backing and I think I got the fabric for the binding as well but yeah, I mean, whew. But I'm just so excited that I have somewhere close to me that I can get quality fabric. Because I'm going to tell you, that those fat quarters you get at Walmart, I don't know what they are. They say they 100% cotton. But I wouldn't even use that as toilet paper. I'm sorry. It is rough. It is some rough fabric. It is not soft at all. And 
What you doing, my little one? My kitty cat's down here. He found a, a strip of fabric that apparently I didn't hit very well in my garbage can. And he's playing with it. As long as he's not playing with my fabric on my sewing machine, I am fine with him playing with that down there. So tell me, who all's sewing room is like Hot Mess Express because I've got threads all over my floor. I need to vacuum this thing. It is definitely needing a good vacuum. It's got threads because I do all of my cutting in this room. I do all of my ironing in this room. I do all of my sewing in this room. I do all of my recording in this room. This was my, the, my sewing room used to be my oldest daughter's bedroom. And I converted it into my office, my sewing room. And my husband converted my youngest son's room into his office. Because he, he has a, I don't know, I guess a side hustle from home that he does when he's off work. And uh, he needs an office to do all that. And plus, it's like his gaming room and whatever. Because our kids are not ever going to move back in with us. I think if they became homeless, they might would rather sleep in their car than move home. Because Mama has rules. And, uh, yeah, I don't care how old you are if you're in my house. There's a rule. I don't like people coming in and out after 9 o'clock because I lock my doors. I mean, who don't lock their doors nowadays? And our home is protected with a pew pew. And, uh, You know, I don't want anybody getting hurt. So everybody knows at my house, if you come in and it's after 9 o'clock, you had better call. But, you know, I'm probably, most of the time I'm going to be in bed anyway. And people know not to come to my house after 9 o'clock. Unless it's an emergency. goodness I'm sitting here wondering if I'm ever gonna get these finished <laughs> I think each fat quarter will make three full blocks I think that's what we got out of this this was a fat quarter and it made yes it made three full blocks And I think if I can get these made, if I can get all of these triangles done tonight, hopefully I can get the other, the big triangles done tomorrow. And then that would leave me to start doing the layout and um, piecing it together the top together I would love to have this done and at the long arm before I head out to see the grandbaby that would be great I could give you guys an update well the update is not gonna, going to come until probably the end of august because i already have um several videos recorded and up you know they're scheduled to come out i did this because while i'm gone i don't know what my 
ability to record and to edit and put videos out is going to be now I do have full intentions of you know doing a a vlog of the travel and um, I, I hope to be able to do a vintage shopping day because when I go up in that area I always go to some vintage shops antique shops I'm not sure what people call them now vintage shops antique shops junk shops thrift stores um, that's just what I, I love doing that because I am looking for some pieces to go in what is about to be our spare bedroom it is currently my um my walk-in pantry <laughs> because my pantry and my kitchen i live in a 2006 double wide it does have lots of room i mean it it is not as roomy as your newer modern ones but i didn't pay the dollar amount that you buy the newer ones for um but and it does have a, a decent pantry but you know i had a family of five so my pantry needed to be more substantial than it was and now that all my children are out of the house, I just converted the front bedroom, which is a smaller bedroom, into a walk-in pantry, food storage, slash storage. I, I keep all of my canning equipment in my jars and things like that in there. Um, but now I'm going to have to go through that. And my husband and I have discussed getting me a small building just for that probably even that I can do my canning in maybe like an outdoor kitchen or something where I can do my canning outside to where it's not heating the inside of the house up now my canning does not consist of these huge all-americans you know pressure canners on top of the stove no I use electric I don't can enough at one time to justify now I do have an all-american don't get me wrong I have an all-american that um, my husband purchased for me but my batches that I do are so small that it does not justify pulling the all-american out now I mean I may have to pull it out now that I'm starting to garden more I was actually the food I would preserve I mainly got it from farmers markets or you know friends would bring food you know cuz family would have an overabundance and they would share it and or they'd want me to make Mamaw's pickles so they would grow and bring to me so you know we I was kind of the canner I made the jelly um, I actually had muscadines picked for me or what are they called scuppernongs or we call them muscadines um, one of my nieces picked muscadines for me last year so I could make her some muscadine jelly and oh my goodness, out of the muscadines she picked me, I still have a gallon and a half of juice in my freezer. <laughs> and let's see, I still have some figs in my freezer that my dad picked. And I do need to get those figs preserved up because I'm almost out of figs and I'm sure my dad would like some too. I mean, even though we should not be eating them because we shouldn't have that sugar 
but yeah I need to get some of them made up you know it's just funny how you can have you don't even think of it as being a harvest you just have a fruit tree but you get so much off of it that you know it, it actually is a harvest it's an actual harvest And if any of y'all, well, like I said, I was fixed to say, if any of y'all are from like the Clarksville, Tennessee, um, Oak Grove, Kentucky area, kind of tell me your little hot spots for eating, which I'm probably going to take most of my food because I don't do well eating out anymore. I, I've kind of quit eating out and... I have realized that when I eat out, my digestive system rebels a little bit on me. And I guess that's because, you know, when you cook at home, you don't eat all them preservatives and stuff that's in a lot of restaurant foods. Because I just really don't know a lot of places to go and eat up there. Because when we go eat, we always get Airbnbs. And I've always cooked like a breakfast. And, you know, I'd have something in the fridge that we could snack on during the day. And that's pretty much all we, we do. Now, sometimes at night we would go out and eat, you know, go to a a safe steak and seafood restaurant or something like that but i'm probably gonna be back by the time y'all see this i may rearrange some of my videos um so this will come out pretty soon but i can't rearrange too many of them because some of them are need to get on out there but yeah if anybody is in that area I may I may have a video a cooking video or something I can move around and I know I said earlier I had something I, I had coming in that I want y'all to see I'm going to do an unboxing on it. I am so excited. It is a kitchen appliance kind of, uh, yeah, kitchen appliance. It is going to replace, I'm probably going to be able to get rid of, which is kind of hard for me to think this, but I'm probably going to be able to get rid of my sous vide that i recently purchased but i got such a great deal on that sous vide i don't mind passing that deal on to somebody else um but this is actually an upgrade for that sous vide but i also think i may be able to get rid of my ninja foodie which it's going to be hard for me to do because I really like my Ninja Foodie. And I love my Ninja Grill, too. I'm not going to get rid of my grill because I use that thing all the time. And honestly, right now, the um, the grill part of it, the grates and the drip pan is in my sink for me to wash. Because I did um, my batch cooking for my meat for the week. I did that day before yesterday and normally I'm able to get it taken care of that day or the next day but I had some things come up and so I still need to wash that and of course I know I'm sewing I chose peace of mind over fighting with 
elbow grease here but it actually isn't hard to clean i mean it, it's just all those little grates you have to get the brush and get into all those little grates it's not hard at all but that will be done tonight before i go to bed because um i want all of my dishes and all of my laundry done in case that baby comes i don't have dirty dishes dirty laundry waiting on me when i get back because i don't know about y'all but I, I make sure to take my garbage out every single morning because i don't want to get that call and forget garbage in my house and then i have to especially kitchen garbage because you know with me cooking and canning and all that i may have food packages in there that i don't want to smell oh i'm almost done i only have two more left y'all look at that is that just not amazing i love these colors oh my goodness love these colors and look at that with that beautiful bright yellow i was thinking about making my backing like either a gray because you know i don't want it to compete with the front but then I thought, oh, that yellow would be beautiful to do. But I don't know. I have to get the whole thing put together before. Because I kind of feel like it, it speaks to me. It tells me what it wants, you know, once I get it put together. I know what the binding needs to look like. I know what the quilting on it needs to look like. Um... Now, I've never carried anything to, for the long arm. I do need to call her tomorrow. I forgot to call her today because I was more worried about that low tire pressure in my front tire than I was calling about the long arm and what I need to bring her. You know, how, how do I need to bring my completed piece to her i do know she has to have four inches all the way around a fabric so and they actually do um sewing classes over there at at the quilt shop they during the summer they had classes for young you know young children for the kids to come and learn how to sew they made shorts they made pillows they made handbags they made i think they made an apron like a cooking apron and i think that is just amazing because you know they're not getting it in high school anymore i I learned how to sew when I was about eight or nine, I think. Oh, y'all, that is it. Um, when I was about eight or nine, my aunt taught us how to sew. Okay, I'm going to show you the, the massive pile I have here. Of, and I'm still pulling. Okay, well, I'm still pulling. Still pulling, okay this is what i have so i'm going to set it over here and now i am not going to cut these by hand i have my little clipper thing here and oh man i should have known i caught that look at there i i did not raise that up and i caught that same but what you do when you catch that same you just take your scissors and clip it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it. You can't see right here because it's kind of off the um, out of camera angle. I'm going to just cut them and lay them there. And that way, and I think this should be 60. It should be 60, I think, because I think it started out with 120. And when you double it. I mean, cut it in half at 60. But I'm just 
doing this and I'll have to press them. I'm not pressing tonight. But I really do appreciate everyone stopping by and watching my videos. Um, I am truly and honestly um, humbled by it. I do appreciate you checking, checking it out. Um, I love sewing and I love talking. So, hey, why not do both at the same time? <laughs> But I hope maybe this gives you some inspiration to, hey, even if it's a pillow or a bag or a little pocket purse, anything, you know, just be inspired to create. It don't even have to be sewing. It could be painting, which Lord knows I cannot paint at all. Not even a wall. I can't paint anything. Um... Now, my aunt, she has that gift. She can paint. But I can't paint. My little sister can paint. She does uh, freehand painting also. And she actually, um, her occupation is she paints houses. So, yeah, go figure. I mean, talk about brave. You know, we're doing the brave line. There's no way I could paint. I mean, in this heat, I know she has told me not too long ago that the heat was just taking her down. You know, heat exhaustion is so easy when you're out there in this heat. But, I mean, she's a trooper for doing it, I'm telling you. And she does some beautiful work. Um, she was working on, on my kitchen in the at the beginning of the remodeling that we started and then she got busy with her work and wasn't able to finish it so i'm going to have to find somebody to uh actually come do a second coat and finish it for me i don't know where i've kind of decided i think i just want to replace my cabinets i don't know i may want to replace my whole house who knows <laughs> but right now no need to but yeah see i don't i'll pull my stack over you can you may be able to see it right there in the corner how it's piling up <laughs> but my next step will be to press these open and then i will start sewing the other let's see see how this makes a triangle here i will sew this to another piece like this down here and make a square or a diamond or whatever shape you know a square turned kind of on its corner as a diamond but that will be my next step and then my step after that We'll be piecing it all together. I'll have to get my layout and decide how I want to lay them out. Um, and then put them together. And I don't have a project board big enough. So I may have to record this in my kitchen on my dining table. So, there we go. Got all of that done. Got all of these pieces. Let me move that out so you can see my little stack here. Uh, I'll show I'll pick it up and show you see that's a nice stack right there and this is what the finished piece looks like let me turn it over maybe there's a yeah that is what the finished piece looks like isn't that gorgeous love those colors But I would like to thank each of you for stopping by. And I truly do appreciate it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more, please subscribe. And click that notification bell. Because you'll receive a notification every time I upload a new video. And that also helps my channel to grow. 
uh, feel free to leave a comment. I love talking to you all. I love the comments. I don't care if you just tell me where you're from, what your temperature is. Um, or, hey, if you have another pattern idea for maybe this fabric. What I tried to do, I tried to find a pattern that showcased this fabric because I thought it was so beautiful. If you leave a comment, I do respond to all of my comments personally. Um, and as always, until I see you again, have a very blessed day. Thank you guys. Goodbye.